Thank you very much for attending my session. I'm Tim Sharp, the Managing Director and Vice President of Operations for Tomorrow Life Sciences, and I'll be covering the future of specimen management through automation, uh, entitled How Best Practices from Leading Biorepositories Can Transform the Cryomanagement of Gametes and Embryos in the Laboratory. So, general disclaimer, uh, I have no significant financial interest or other relationship with the manufacturers of the products or providers of the, of the services other than Tomorrow Life Sciences that will be discussed in this session in any way influence the information we presented in today's discussion. So a little background. Um, I've done biorepositories for the past 20 years, uh, working with the NCI, working with uh, ATCC, and a whole variety of clinical and diagnostic laboratories. Biorepositories in general typically support laboratories such as pathology, bioanalytical, uh, central laboratories, diagnostic labs, and uh, other types of activities such as cryopreservation. Uh, biorepositories tend to operate under really rigorous standards uh, such as those in the FDA for uh, laboratory practices, clinical practices, and manufacturing practices for pharmaceuticals, including good tissue practices for transplant, and of course ISO uh, standards for 17025, 13485 for medical device applications. So. The challenge that we see today is that in uh, the laboratory for IVF, we're seeing this accumulation of specimens. And uh, this is actually something very similar to what biorepository saw about 15 years ago. It was just this massive influx of material. And as that material had grown, uh, biobankers uh, across the globe realized that there was a struggle that we needed to, achieve, to manage, a, a way for us to achieve more uh, with this burden. And what we came up with was several standards and systems that we've integrated over the years to allow us to better manage uh, our collections and to better facilitate our laboratories. So one of the key things is that in specimen management, uh, us as modern biorepositories focus on uh, five different areas. Uh, we focus on the equipment management, the systems needed to ensure that our equipment is properly maintained and running correctly. Location management, so that way we can find specimens as we need them. Data management, to ensure that we have consistency with our records. Monitoring, so that way we can ensure our environmental conditions are maintained well. And then risk management, so that way we have contingencies for when things go wrong. So inside of a biorepository, you'll find a variety of automated systems. We have large specimen storage environments that are uh, monitored and maintained through a complex series of computer algorithms and uh, equipment redundancies. We have packaging and receipt by the laboratory, so these are automated uh, uh, areas where you will find um, shippers and uh, inbound material and outbound material being coordinated through a logistics group. Of course, we have specimen processing, so the activities that occur in the laboratory to move the specimens along. And then, of course, specimen analyzing, where we're going through the efforts to assure that the specimen is fit for purpose and is correct. All of these uh, definitely have application within the IVF laboratory. So one of the big things that we focus on as biobankers is understanding inventory management. The key about inventory management is, is that it's not only about accuracy of the inventory, but it's about the efficiency of being able to withdraw the material in a safe and efficient manner. So if you know where the material is exactly, you minimize risk to other material that exists in the same environment. So it's very crucial. That being said, all inventory management systems have an error rate. And uh, through our progression in biobanking, we've seen how manual entry or manual inventory uh, done on paper-based, as it goes all the way through to cryogenic storage environments or large storage environments where the inventory management is in integrated into the robotics, that the error rate rapidly, significantly drops over time. So what we've encountered manually is about a 27% error rate. So for every thousands of specimens, 27% of them have, are end up in error, either through data or through transcription or transposition type errors. 
Whereas if you go on the other side with automated storage and automated systems that integrate your inventory management, you're looking at less than a thousand of a percent. And that's very significant for managing large collections as what is occurring in the IVF laboratory today. So inventory systems in a cryogenic uh, biorepository consists of specific XY coordinates. So today in IVF labs, you are typically encountering doers with canisters and goblets and canes. And the, the challenge is, is that a canister can contain 24 to 30 uh, goblets with no, no uh, real issue. And unfortunately, you have to search through all of those canes and goblet assemblies to identify the correct specimen. Locations, uh, location is an address and it can't be duplicated. The reason for that is because you want to go in directly to that specific area and not have to search around things because as you're searching, you're displacing the inventory and potentially compromising other specimens. Uh, specimen physical dimensions are accounted for. In other words, you need to know how much space currently is consumed by the specimens that are occupying it versus the space that the specimens uh, need to enter into in the future. So having this constant awareness allows you to better prepare your environments and better prepare your storage methods so that you don't run into a situation where you've exceeded your storage capacity and you don't have a place to put things. Um, Two-way inventory updates. Um, what that means is that instead of going into a doer and looking at a specific list of inventory and identifying everything that's on that list in that doer, you're actually going back and accounting for everything that's in the doer that wasn't on that list. And the inventory systems and cryogenic biorepositories really focus on that. So that way you don't have just the stuff that you know is in your database, but you're accounting for the stuff that doesn't necessarily exists in the database and it's a critical element for assuring your inventory integrity. Um, we often have limits to how many specimens can exist within a container. This way we don't run the risk of overstuffing and I'm sure many of the laboratories uh, have encountered situations where there are too many canes in a canister and when they remove a cane they end up catching another cane and potentially flipping that cane out of the environment. So this is why it's really crucial to be able to define those limits so that you don't exceed them. And these inventory systems are completely integrated with specimen management systems. Now, the key about specimen management systems is that they actually cover the entire life cycle of the specimen. So they cover from the patient, meaning that we've collected some metadata associated with the patient. Um, they cover the procedure as which the specimen was collected from the patient. And then they go through an acquisition, which usually is the application of a unique identifier to the specimen, so that way it can be traced throughout its life cycle. Um, then there's handling, processing, storage, disposition, scientific analysis, and then that ultimately the use of the specimen. The whole point of it is that a specimen management system really focuses on the entire life cycle of the specimen and allows you to have a, a complete understanding, a chain of custody, if you will, and a chain of activities. So, a specimen management system is both an inventory system and a data warehouse, meaning that you can run queries, you can understand the specimens, you can understand the history and the activities, and you can use that data to support other operations. The data is traceable to the original patient, meaning that the specimen is not separated from that original patient, and it allows you the flexibility of being able to go back and understand the patient's uh, uh, systems and the patient's uh, health healthcare. The chain of custody includes, included in these systems is to reduce the variation within processing as well. Instead of pulling out a specimen twice for the same application, you've already identified that you've uh, removed the specimen and you don't need to do it a second time. And of course, the systems of security have to be 21 CFR compliant. Uh, this is to assure that you don't have patient data uh, being uh, transmitted over the web in unsecure ways or that patient data may be compromised uh, because we all understand in this century data integrity is critical. Now another element that uh, cryogenic repositories tend to focus on is the environmental monitoring systems. So when we look at environmental monitoring systems we look at it in terms of complete audit trails and the understanding of those audit trails so that way we can see all the events that occurred both positive and negative um, we want to have the data transmission to as many communication systems as possible so we want to have ethernet and wireless capabilities so that way we can transmit uninterrupted 
Um, we need diversity, of course, in the alert and the alarm system, so that way it can text us, it can send us a voicemail, it can communicate to us through email. Those applications are very common today. And we want to be able to have real-time visual and audible alarms because it does no good for you to have an alert uh, that ends up uh, being five minutes late. And of course, the system qualification uh, is essential as well. So that way you know that the unit or that the system is performing as expected. So that all being said, tomorrow's offering the solution altogether. So the tomorrow system actually allows for us to integrate the computer systems found in a bio repository, which allows us to manage our specimens, but it's doing it in real time to understand that the specimens are moving into and out of the system with a complete understanding of what's occurring and that we're doing the environmental monitoring as it's happening. So that way you've got real time information we're alerting and alarming so that folks can also understand their environment. And of course, we do have capacity and metric calculations already established in the system so that we can understand how much space is remaining and what your usage rate is. So a tremendous amount of data is capable through our systems for that purpose. So I'd like to invite you to come to our uh, virtual booth um, later on this session. And I thank you for your attendance to our, uh, our seminar.